What is up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Imperial Diecast. And today, I am going to be reviewing possibly the coolest vintage BMW coupe in existence, the E24 Sharknose. So with the E24, BMW basically created the first generation of the 6 Series Grand Tourers. It had a 13-year production run, starting in 1976, with this 635 CSI first introduced in 1978, and when production ended in 1989, there was no second generation 6 Series for the next 15 years, until 2004 when Chris Bangle's E63 Coupe and E64 Roadster came out. Maisto, of course, has made the Roadster, and Hot Wheels and Jari have made the Coupe. And Paragon has made the F06, F12, and F13 that is the current 6 Series. And although Paragon is not a budget manufacturer, those 6 Series are almost always on sale. But strangely, no budget manufacturers seem to have made the very first 6 Series, namely the E24. Or so I thought in the beginning. Because there are of course the Automobile and Minichamps versions, which are roughly around the 100 euro mark, but both of which are sealed. Then there is the fully opening and highly sought after auto art, which about 20 years ago when it first came out, was probably under a 100 euro retail. <laughs> Today, if you want to buy one, yeah. And then I came across this, Anson, a company who I have so far not reviewed on my channel yet. Anson is a budget manufacturer, in terms of quality, very much like a Burago or Maisto. Well, actually even worse, more like a Motormax, but it depends on the model. Some Ansons look good, others not so much. I personally think this E24 is one of their better ones. It is die-cast and fully opening, which to me personally immediately makes it more attractive than the Minichamps and Auto versions. 
although they do look better in a display due to the raised window glass and better finish. So ultimately, if you are a vintage BMW collector, it really depends on your personal taste. If you say, looks are super important and I'll always only be putting my model in a display cabinet, then go for the Mini Champs or Auto. But if you say, nah, I want a fully opening E24, but I don't want to pay the extortion price of the auto art, then I can only recommend this Anson before it gets even rarer. So the guy I was going to purchase this from originally had it up for a buy it now price of 65 euros, but then decided to remove the listing and put it back up as an auction. He was probably hoping that it would sell for even more, but I think not enough people are aware of the existence of an Anson E24, so only a few bidders participated in that auction, and therefore I ended up winning this car in that auction for 48 euros. Which is a fantastic price for a near mint Anson with box. I mean, I would have been ready to pay up to 70 euros for this E24, considering it would still be cheaper than the Mini Champs are Auto and a fully opening diecast. So, this is an old model, and a lot of times the Ansons that you see on sale on eBay are banged up and in a pretty poor condition. But this one was thankfully in near mint. This color is known as Royal Blue Metallic. Anson also made this E24 in silver, in white, and in a race livery. I think this is the 1978 pre-facelift version, although the interior, especially the steering wheel, is that of the 1982 facelift. But we'll get to that later. So taking a look at the front of the E24 BMW 635 CSI, I mean, this is basically the main selling point of the E24 and why people still want to buy it these days. It's this aggressive shark nose of what's basically the Paul Brack era of cars. And I think that the BMW E24 has like the most aggressive looking of them all. Regarding the headlights, this is, of course, an issue that I have, namely, every single headlight has a peg, and the indicators also have pegs. But here's the thing, even the much more expensive Mini Champs version, the sealed one, also has pegs on each headlight and on each indicator. So you'd have to buy the automobile version if you don't like pegs, or the auto art. But other than that, considering that this is a vintage car from the 1970s, it doesn't bother me that much. And the kidney grills are also done very nicely. You've got the chrome trim, and the trim also extends around the front grille on either side of the headlights. And if you look at the bottom, you can see that we actually have more grills here, or air vents, I should say. One thing you might notice is that Anson did not include fog lamps on this model, but I think on the real E24 they were optional. If we move further up, you'll see that we have here a nice BMW badge. And this is actually a separate piece. This is a real badge, and not just a sticker or something that you would normally expect from a budget manufacturer. So it's good on Anson to have included that extra level of detail. So what I like about these vintage BMWs is they have a clamshell hood, reminding me of some of the Jaguars of the time, from the E-Type to the XJS. And this is basically a straight-six engine, or inline-six. With this being the 635 CSI, it's short form for 6 Series, 3.5 liter engine. About 215 horsepower. The M6 had something like 285, and uh, top speed was something like 230 kilometers per hour, and 0 to 100 was like 6.5 seconds. You can see that Anson did put a lot of detail into this engine because we have chrome lettering for the BMW, and the silver stripes, or the chrome stripes, are also slightly raised. We can, of course, see the six cylinders and the suspension covers, and you can even see that we have a little warning label printed here on the left 
and it says caution and some other text that I can't read. It's really nice. So, I think it's alright. And here's a look at the side of the E24 BMW 635 CSI. You can definitely tell just by how angular the front is shaped that it's a very aggressive styling. Although, I think that the um, rear window could have been designed a little bit better because it isn't as sharp as it's supposed to, I guess. One thing you will notice is that there is a difference between this E24 and its predecessor, the E9, in that there is a B-pillar, because the E9 didn't have that. And, of course, the B-pillar is painted in black to keep it a little discreet. Anson has provided us with chrome door handles, as well as a little chrome trim here. And you can see that we have wire wheels. Something that sets the 635 CSI apart from lower performance E24s is that it came with a single piece black rear spoiler. You'll also see a lot of E24s with chrome mirror sculpts, although they were an option, so they're not provided here for this Anson. And now if we take a closer look at the wheels, as I mentioned earlier, you can see that these are classic vintage wire wheels. They have BMW logos in the center, although this is just a sticker. Um, one other thing I forgot to mention is that this front bumper here is made out of plastic, while the rest of the car is made out of metal. The wheels spin, of course, which is good, and they also turn, which is another advantage that you get with the Anson. And here's a look at the back of the E24 BMW 635 CSI. I think the back is actually just as good looking, if not even better than the front, because there are absolutely no pegs on the taillights, as you can see. And the taillights are also made out of a really nice and reflective material that, depending on how much light they are exposed to, will either shine bright red, almost orange, like for example right now, or in a much darker red if there's only diffuse lighting. So I think they're made out of the same reflective material that, for example, these um, warning stripes are made out of that you wear as a pedestrian when you're walking alongside the Autobahn. Other than that, another big pro of the Anson is that we also have a BMW badge on the back instead of just a sticker or something like that. So this is again an area where Anson shows that it can do better than a Maisto from the 1990s. We also have 635 CSI written on the top right. And of course the rear license plate says FUNW26. The exhausts could have been done better, as you can see, the centers are not colored in, but this is something you can easily do yourself. If we move further up, you'll notice that the rear windshield has defroster lines, as well as a chrome trim. Another advantage of the Anson compared to other brands like Yatming Road Signature is that the trunk also opens, and inside there's not a whole lot to see, though. I mean, there's no room for any spare wheel or anything like that. But it's still cool that we have this feature. And now let's take a look at the interior of the E24 BMW 635 CSI. And the interior is, as you would expect from a car from the 70s and early 80s, pretty retro looking. We've got this huge um, stack of air vents here at the top which looks pretty interesting, although the actual air vents are at the very right and further to the left, while well, these areas in the center are just made to look like vents. Then we have the center console right there, very analog, with two more air vents, and you can see that we have like these dials. Everything is raised. It's not a sticker like you might expect on a Burago or Maestro of the time. 
lots of buttons. And here we have a five speed manual. And you can also see the handbrake right there. There's no carpeting, although you can see that on the driver's side we have a floor mat. Let's take a look at the seats. They look pretty good, just like their real 80s equivalents. Got some side bolstering. The material that they're made out of is actually rubber and not plastic. And they do have a little bit of flex to them as well. The back seats are also done pretty well. You can see that we have the red um, belt buckles. And we've got the mirror and the sun visors there at the top. And the door panel doesn't have a whole lot of detail. Although the door handle and surround are painted and look nice. But yeah, I mean, it's always nice to have a fully opening diecast model, isn't it? Let's take a look at the driver's side next. So before taking a look at the driver's side, just wanted to make you aware of the sunroof outline that we have here. But yeah, um, driver's side looks pretty good. You can see that the steering wheel has the BMW logo. And it's also slightly um, sunk in, just like on the real steering wheel. So the interior makes me think that this is the facelift version, although the exterior is of the pre-facelift. Maybe I'm wrong on this, but for example, the facelift would have had like an extra bar underneath the taillights, which is kind of missing here. Um, but then again, I'm not an E24 expert, so yeah. Um, one thing that's really cool, though, is you can see that we actually have these colorings around the um, climate control dial right there to the right of the center console. We also have floor pedals, although they are not painted or chromed or anything like that. And you can also see that we have a sticker for the gauges, and the gauges are readable, I think, which is pretty nice. And finally, checking out the bottom of the E24 635 CSI, um, there's actually a lot of detail here because we have the exhaust system painted in matte silver. We've got the fuel tanks, or at least that's what I believe the fuel tanks are. Then, of course, we have here a spare wheel indentation. And something else, maybe this is the fuel tank as well, I don't know. Um, mufflers. Dual exhausts, of course. So, yeah, up here it says 118 BMW 635 CSI, made in China, Anson. Pretty good. Well, guys, that does it for the review of this E24 BMW 635 CSI in 118 scale by Anson. If you're interested in more vintage BMWs, please make sure to check my review of the E12. M535i, or perhaps the E38 7 series. And as always, take care. This is Imperial Diecast, signing out.